My name is IRP Reganian. Um, I'm the founder of Body Bar Protein, and we are located in Austin, Texas. Our company produces protein bars that are certified by the Paleo Foundation and gluten-free. I've always been very athletic, um, even as a child. In about 2007, I was um, diagnosed with an autoimmune condition that really limited me to what I ate um, and just kind of always being active. Um, you know, you always need that extra source of protein, especially, um, you know, when you're on the go. I also had, a, at that time, an infant and and just... What, with my active lifestyle, I always found it a little difficult to find the perfect on-the-go snack. Um, you know, I'd always go to the supermarket and, and try to find a protein bar that had as minimal ingredients as possible. Try to keep, you know, anything that was super clean I can eat without upsetting my stomach. And I always found it a little difficult. Um, so what I did one day was like I, I decided to just make a few protein bars just for myself. Um, so I reached out to a, a food scientist and a nutritionist and kind of gave him my idea of what I was looking for. And honestly, I did not think I would make this big of a business with it or launch anything with it. I kind of just did it for myself. Um, but what I started to do is just share it with friends and family just to get their input. Um, and sure enough, people really liked it and they were, you know, always asking me for more samples um, and that's kind of what started me on this journey to finding body bar was originally it just started for me seeking a healthy protein option when I was on the go. And then it developed into, into this company today. The reason I like paleo and honestly, I tried to stick to quality standards when I selected the ingredients in the protein bars. So um, what the paleo foundation does is essentially they, they kind of go through each ingredient. Um, they look through it very carefully, all the specifications. So that's kind of where, um, I was trying to go is that in every ingredient that I was going to use in the bar, I wanted it to be a quality ingredient because I felt like if I, if I'm going to put anything in my body, it should be more quality. I wasn't really looking at the macros as much or making sure it fit into a certain calorie content, but more of the quality of the ingredients I was using. I definitely had challenges earlier on and, and even more recently because of the limited amount of ingredients that I wanted in the protein bars um, and the, the ingredients that I wanted. So earlier on, um, you know, obviously the more you pack into a protein bar or anything, it will help, for example, the bar to stick together. Um, but because I had, for example, coconut oil and the almond butter, um, sometimes it would secrete too much oil. So I constantly was running into the perfect balance. And when I was working with a food scientist, you know, we were trying to make sure that the bar wasn't too dry, then too oily. Um, it actually took us, to be honest, about a year and a half to two years to, to get to a recipe that really worked because at one point, even though the bars tasted really good, the oil content, you know, it was leaking the oil a little bit. So what we have today is really a, a long time, about a year and a half to two years of, of trying to perfect a recipe. So the way I landed on the three was originally I was just going to do the grass fed way with the collagen. Um, I think I landed on chocolate because I felt like it's a universal flavor, but I really like chocolate myself and I don't always get to have a chocolate bar because of the amount of sugar in it. Um, so I, I said, let's try something with chocolate. Um, and we sweetened it with the dates, which was really nice because it, you know, doesn't have the, the added sugar. Um, and that's how we kind of landed on the chocolate. And I really wanted something, um, that had a little bit of apple, some cinnamon, because again, it gives such a homey feeling. Um, so we, we did an apple cinnamon combination, which really there isn't very many apple cinnamon bars on the market today. Um, and then the vegan line kind of came up you know, organically, because I felt like I personally really like 
the pumpkin, sunflower, and flax protein, um, it's kind of different than the pea protein and the brown, brown rice protein that's on the market today because, um, and actually a, a few people have told me at the expo that it's kind of neat that I'm not using like a pea protein blend because you can definitely taste the pea protein um, in powders and shakes and, and bars. So I kind of came up, I kind of thought that was a really neat combination that the food scientist had used um, and it's very different than what's available now on the market. What I've noticed as a trend oftentimes is that we try to be pleasing to the consumer and sometimes we, we fill our products with a lot of sugar, um, thinking that if it's sweet, everyone will eat it. Um, but oftentimes the sweet, sometimes like the artificial flavors or this, the sugar substitutes, really have this strong taste or this aftertaste. Um, and I really like using the dates, for example, and it's become a little bit more popular. I know some people say, oh, well, you know what? It's, it's not, it won't fill the keto area, but at the same time, if you, if you're trying to go for quality, you know, I didn't really look at let's fill a specific diet more of let's look at what the quality is. So I feel like nowadays people definitely, even after COVID, are, are more concerned about their health and they want to have something they can rely on on the go um, and feel good about eating without being worried about too much of like, oh, I just had this. It had so much sugar in it. You know, it's not a, it's not like a, a candy bar, for example, but definitely it does kind of have a nice sweet tooth to it. It feels the sweet tooth of, um, that's what some people have told me that they'll even have it in the evening, like instead of a chocolate or, um, I'm sorry, like an ice cream, they'll have it with, um, you know, in, in the evening before they go to bed. I see that everything kind of going the natural path, which is super neat. Even at Expo, um, people have kind of taken the ordinary, um, and added a twist, a natural twist to it which I think is super neat. Um, I feel like the earth gives us a lot, you know, for example, like almonds are one of my favorite things. I use, you know, almond flour in all my cooking, um, or baking. So I think that we, I think the earth gives us really good options. Um, and I see, definitely see the trend, especially at Expo, a lot of plant-based, um, a lot of a lot of food items are trying to take what we've typically been used to seeing in supermarkets and putting a natural twist to it where the consumer feels much better about eating it. Like, for example, snack bars for kids. Um, you know, now we see it where it's like a hundred percent fruit snack and you feel good about giving that to your child. So definitely I see the trend going that way. We started and about 2019 is when I originally started working on the recipe um, and through the many iterations that we've had. But with COVID-19, you know, obviously kind of trying to understand the new landscape and, you know, working with co-manufacturers and having them, you know, ensure that they can be open and can, can they get the supplies that they need? Can we get the ingredients? Can we have the staff? It definitely slowed things down, but it gave me an opportunity to just take a minute and, you know, stop what I was doing and really reflect on my product on our protein bars and just make sure that what we were going to provide to the, to the world was actually quality and not trying to rush through it, even with the difficulties that COVID was off was, um, COVID was presenting. I'm trying to be direct to consumer as much as possible. Um, you know, one of the things I had mentioned earlier on in the discussion was because of my, um, because of my autoimmune issue, which is ulcerative colitis, I started this to give people an opportunity to have a, you know, something like a sweet snack without the guilt or not the guilt, but like an upset stomach, for example. So you know, my goal is um, direct to consumer, and I actually am an ambassador um, for a network, you know, that uh, works with digestive diseases. So my goal has always been whatever, you know, I can, however I can, is to share the goodness that I've created with 
individuals who really seek something like this, you know, as an addition when they're limited to their diet so much. So definitely, you know, retails, I do reach out to retail. We are in a few locations already in Austin, Texas, a few, a few markets, um, in Texas, we, we reach out to CrossFit gyms, to cafes. Um, but definitely I have, um, offered my support to a lot of other networks too. Um, for example, that support the digestive disease community, the autoimmune community, um, and provide my protein bars. You know, if there's a, like a walk or an event or anything I can provide them with as a snack, I've, I've always, I am offering that too, just to try to also fulfill my original purpose was to provide something to the world that people can enjoy, um, when they are, have such health, health restrictions or diet restrictions. So where I'm focusing my energy right now as much as possible is direct to consumer. Um, I am focusing on like the local markets. Um, and the reason I, I'm kind of not rushing to get to the shelves at the bigger supermarkets is because I really want people to know the brand, to see it, um, to understand what it is, to understand the mission behind why I started. Um, again, I never started this just to provide something to the masses and make money out of it. It was always mission driven. So the longer I can stick to direct to consumer where people come to the website, read the story, read the purpose, um, and find out that, you know what, even with restrictions in our diet, there is options out there. Um, and I'm happy to help anyone that reaches out to me, get any resources they need, um, for any restrictions they have, if I can be of help to them. So that's kind of been my goal. And I think that'll always be my primary is to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with, with our consumers, um, and also our customers.